Welcome to Kujo Sound. This is Bjorn Jacobson speaking, and this is Game Audio Talk about Detroit Become Human from Quantic Dream. Hello. Welcome to the Detroit Experience. A quick and fast disclaimer here, Game Audio Talk is all about the sound design of a game and its solutions. Why, how, and questions and guest answers are here. It's not a review or a bash of the game, we are strictly talking about the audio solutions that we find here and how I, as a fellow AAA game sound designer, perceive the sounds and the solutions that they used in this game. Detroit Become Human is a long-awaited game from Quantic Dream and David Cage, who has previously done really well with games such as Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, and Fahrenheit, that's Indigo Prophecy for you American people out there. Delighted to meet you. Follow me. I'll take you to your room. And it's pretty clear from the very get-go that David Cage has totally upped his game and is using all his experience from the previous games and all of their issues with narrative has been made into this very, very rock-solid game. I really enjoyed it. A personal note here too, I really like these games overall and I never understood why they take so much heat from their narrative perspective. I'm always super immersed when I play these games and that's just my personal opinion. So that doesn't really count. Does it? Anyway, Detroit is the latest from Quantic Dream, and control-wise and the way it's told, it, there isn't much new there. But the sound design in Detroit totally rocks my socks. Not to talk about the graphics, it's really pleasing. In this particular video, I'll put some focus on Detroit's choice of having the listener put on the main camera, and all of the main audio calculations are done from the listener position. Why is this a good thing? And how can this cause a bunch of problems? Let's talk about that. Detroit has a very standard third-person controller setup. Nothing particularly fancy about it. The main audio listener is located on the camera, which is very common. And how do we know that the listener is located on the camera? And how do we know that the calculations are made from there? Here is a room. We are walking around in it. and All sounds good. But here we hear some raindrops from this window. These raindrops fade out as we walk away from the window and they disappear as we walk through this door. But that only works when we walk through the door at a steady pace. What if we stand right here in the door and take baby steps through it? Notice how the sound of the raindrops doesn't go away until the camera has physically passed the door and not the character. This tells me something about that whatever gate or controller they use to switch the sounds between these rooms are calculated from the camera. This doesn't mean that the actual listener is located on the camera though, but that the calculations are done from there. But if we look at this other scenario here, where we are standing still, voices are coming from some nearby NPCs, and when we rotate the camera, the sounds also rotate. So the spatulization and the rotation is calculated from the view of the camera and not the orientation of whatever character you may be in control of. Having the listener on the camera like this is not bad and not bad practice at all. And it's very common and the common player won't most likely notice anything about it. But since this is Game Audio Talk and we're all geeking out about this, then let's notice. Wink, wink. Here we have a house and a door that we cannot pass. If we move the camera all the way up to the player and start rotating, notice how the sound changes slightly as the camera is now physically inside the door. This tells me something about that the border of the house is just on the door and that we, by forcing this scenario, can make the camera pass this border. This most likely means that the editor that they have been using to set up the audio in this level is taking into account that the ambient sounds that you hear from the outside, right here, and the ambient sounds from the inside are forced into the level by knowing that the player cannot pass this door. By that I mean that because it's not possible to pass this door right now, the game uses that information because if it knows that the player cannot pass this door, it also knows that if the player passes the door, the indoor ambience should play. 
And this gives us some issues when we force the camera through the door like this. The same thing goes here. We are not allowed to pass this doorway here for game design reasons. But we can still force the camera through this opening and go outside. This gives us some clear ambient sound problems with fades and cutoffs when we do so. Detroit also has a filter on the camera orientation. And this is quite common to fake a soundscape, which puts more attention to the sounds in front of you rather than the ones behind you. Luckily for us, no our human brain in no psychoacoustics automatically yeah. thinks that this means that the sound is muffled, behind something, behind us, or in other ways hidden. Alice! Daddy's very mad! You deserve to be taught a good lesson! If we go back to the scenario where we're standing still, we can rotate the camera and notice how the sounds become slightly muffled when where they rotate from behind the camera. This is different from having a directional emitter, because this is a filter applied to the camera positioning rather than the emitter. By low passing or in other ways filter and alter the sounds when they come from a specific angle in the soundscape. Rotate the camera here and you will notice that the character Todd's voice becomes muffled as he is behind us, but also put some reverb settings and other things that changes whenever we do so. You and I have a little score to say. When he goes upstairs and stuff is happening there, when we turn our back, the camera's back that is, to the staircase, the voices from upstairs also become altered and filtered. This tells us something about that there's some sort of filter applied to the camera and listener position. And it's very common, but nonetheless a very smart and efficient way of creating a very, very trustworthy soundscape. Not to mention that I personally totally dig the audio ambiences and the details of this game. It's really bravo. When having the listener on the camera like this, and you have an in-engine generated scene like this, which isn't pre-rendered, and you have quite high spatialization, or at least a low spread on all your sounds, you also get this issue here, the sound of the water in the background move quite hefty when the camera changes position. This is not per se an error or a problem or a bug, but if you start to notice the water moving, the focus area of the audio starts to shift towards it, and you lose immersion in the dialogue and the rest of the scene. Whose side are you on? I'm on the human side, of course. <laughs> well, that's what you're programmed to say. But you. <sighs> I'm a man of my word. Ask one question, and I'll tell you all I know. I want to know who RA9 is. RA9. That is something that I have specifically written an entire article about for asoundeffect.com and a system called the Nuisance Score, and I'll link it in the description below if you want to read it. That's it for this video on listener position and camera use in Detroit Become Human. If you like this video, why not hit the like and subscribe button right now? If you do, you will be notified whenever I put up new material and new videos, which is quite often. If you really like this material and learn something from it, why not jump over to patreon.com forward slash Cujo Sound, where you for as little as $1 a month can support this channel and the material on it. There you will also find all the previous videos and articles I have posted. And beside all that, and not only supporting the channel and helping me out afford the time I spend on creating this material, you also gain access to personal counseling, career guidance, you can ask questions, I will answer, I will help you out to the best of my knowledge. You also gain access to a dedicated Discord channel where we can discuss game audio whenever we want. Consider it, because I would really appreciate it. And it will also help me create more content and better content about audio design, which I think is totally needed. 
Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again very, very soon for more Game Audio Talk. Kujo Sound and Bjorn Jacobson, signing out. Can I help you? Do you have authorization? Yes.